गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल गुड मॉर्निंग सर व्या गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्कार लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन आई एम विभूति दास स्पेशल सेक्रेटरी एम एस एम डिपार्टमेंट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ ओडिशा से ग्रेट मॉर्निंग एंड आई एम रियली हैप्पी टू वेलकम ऑल अवर डिग्नेटरीज ऑन द डैश ऑफ द डैश प्लीज जॉइन मी इन गिविंग ए हार्टी वेलकम एंड बिग राउंड ऑफ अप्लोज फॉर आवर गेस्ट ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर श्री प्रताप के श्री देव सर ही इज द ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर फॉर एम एस एम ई इंडस्ट्रीज एंड एनर्जी श्री शाश्वत मिश्र सर आवर प्रिंसिपल सेक्रेटरी श्री मिनहज आलम सर एडिशनल सेक्रेटरी मोहपी श्री मोहम्मद सादिक आलम श्रीमती रश्मि साहू डायरेक्टर होम ऑयल एंड फ्लावर मिल्स श्री राजन पाठी कमर्शियल डायरेक्टर बी वन बिजनेस हाउस प्राइवेट लिमिटेड श्री कामाक्षा दास को फाउंडर ऑफ कृति कफी एंड श्री डॉक्टर आदित्य पंडा फ्रूट सर्कुलर इकोनॉमी लीडर इंडिया एंड साउथ वेस्ट एशिया उड़ीसा the investment scenario and the industry scenario in odisha doesn't need any introduction especially for last one decade or so so i will start our session by requesting our principal secretary sri sashwat misra sir to give the context set the context and the give the introduction address sir from there Is little smaller, say eight crores 
10 crores, 12 crores, 14 crores. Then same capital investment subsidy under the OVSA MSME policy would be more liberal. For example, if it is a 10 crores, then under IPR you get 2 crores if it is under priority sector. But if you ask the same incentive under Odisha MSME policy, it would be either 2.5 crores or 3 crores if it is in a backward district or 3.5 crores if it is led by human entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs belonging to persons with disability, schedule person, schedule type, so like this. So you need to judge which uh, benefit will be more lucrative under which provision of the policy. The big, biggest thing in Odisha's policy uh, is that you can, suppose there are 8 or 9 uh, incentives, you can take 4 incentives from, from one policy, another 4 incentives from, from other policy. That kind of uh, mix and match is allowed in Odisha's policy framework. So suppose I can take CIS, electricity duty, SGST reimbursement under IPR, I can take uh, employment uh, cost subsidy and other subsidies from MSME policy. So whichever is more lucrative to you, you decide, you apply, we will administer the policy benefit to you. How much money we are giving in a year on an average to MSMEs? Last year we gave about 52, 52 crores of in incentives to MSMEs under IPR, under MSME policy and under the food processing policy. That number is increasing because many projects are in the pipeline and this year we are expecting that number to jump about uh, to 70, 75 crores. Maybe in the next year it will touch about 100 crores. There are many entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs who have set their um, uh, plant in Odisha and uh, doing well. Uh, in fact, I, we forgot to invite one lady entrepreneur who has set up a pasta making unit in Balangi. Balangi, you know, is just the famous or infamous KBK region of Odisha. Uh, once upon a time infamous, now no more infamous. Uh, but they are they set up uh, a pasta making unit and doing very well. And they are exporting their pastas to um, uh, Gulf and other countries. So, so many progressive things are happening. They will be speaking from their own experience. Our honourable minister is also here. And um, I take this opportunity to thank my management and additional secretary of MOFPI, Sri Minha Zala, who has been helping us um, on these uh, PMFME schemes and other green medicine. Thank you, Minha. And thank you for coming and uh, sh sharing some time uh, with us. So with this, I conclude my uh, welcome, so-called welcome speech. But I will be there for any queries or post-meeting discussion. But for anything, I am available. We, and all our officers are available. Uh, at least till tomorrow, uh, end of the program, we are available. You all are welcome to Odisha. In fact, yesterday, uh, Cadbury's uh, officers had come. I don't know whether they are present here or not. They are now exploring the idea of setting up the Asia's biggest chocolate manufacturing unit in Odisha, somewhere near Bhubaneswar. So that will be, that will then, uh, we will see to it that that, that, that uh, idea fructifies very quickly. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for such a compact and impactful uh, introduction. Uh, we are having a 2-3 minutes uh, film on the potential of food processing sector in Odisha. Let me run the film, please.
Industries and energy to kindly address the gathering. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and I welcome you to the Odisha State Session, the emerging destination of food processing in the country as of today. On the dais, the principal secretary, MSME department, and on the distinguished guests. In the audience, those who want to invest, those who want to know about Odisha, friends, I welcome you all. In this uh, event today, the introduction was given by the principal secretary and cutting out the niceties, coming straight to the point. Ultimately, whosoever wants to process food is coming to Odisha or any other state with the point of view of making a profit. So first, if there is no profit, no business also will come and do a social work there. So the social work part, the responsibility of the government is we understand that fully well and we have already taken the steps in the right direction. Like if you saw the video, I hope you liked it. The majority of the scenes you have seen are of ladies. In Odisha, we have started something called Mission Shakti. And the campaign has started for the last 17 years now. And this is the 18th year. And this in 18 years' time, we have trained, groomed, financed all kinds of ladies' group, right from the village to the city, with financial assistance and making them to WSCG, women's health and groups. And now we have given them bank listings. We have come to a stage where we cannot just call them a social welfare scheme. Now we are promoting them to SME. And we have started providing this group and we are also providing training facility with them for them to take up food processing at the village level in a very big way. And we are processing loan up to 1 lakh to 20 lakhs to each group. And we will be happy to know that as of today, out of the population of 4.5 crores, we have got about 80 lakh women already entrenched in the system. So the base work is done. 
Why I say this? Why example I say this? Let me give you a example of district Raigala. It's a tribal dominated district in South Odisha. And it's one of the highest intensity of growing corn in the entire country. And one of the better qualities of corn grown in the country. And everything is done by tribes. Like somebody wants to come and set up a corn starch processing plant in say Raigala in the industrial state. He can come and plug and play. But he should also be understanding that there is a huge workforce already there on the ground who will provide them immediate raw material. So food processing for us in Odisha holds not only the business opportunity, also the social obligation. So we have married the two. Social part been taken by the government. And the business part, like the policy intervention what Mr. Sashwak Krishna has told you. We are a unique state which gives food processing a triple benefit. One in the IPR with the industrial policy resolution of 2022, in which the first sector and the private sector is the third we are giving 20 and 30 percent capital subsidy. Electricity duty is free. I am also the energy minister and in the designated pockets if you set up the plants like in Raigada, you will get a 2 rupee uh, cut on the existing tariff. So let's take the case of say Maharashtra or Gujarat. The average electricity tariff there is about 7.5 rupees. Whereas in Odisha it is, for general domestic consumption it is 5 rupees 60 rupees. And on top of that, if you on 7 rupees you get 2 rupees subsidy for 7 years, you are at par with the domestic. So that kind of a subsidy we are giving in electricity. We have got land which is still cheap. And we have got a workforce which is skilled. And I've got water also plenty level, 11% of the water of the country belongs to my state. I've got 69 major medium and minor irrigation projects. So Odisha is the destination where you've got infrastructure to transport, coastline to export, two robust airports, functional and from December onwards we'll be having warehouse facilities in Indonesia International Airport. So all the ingredients are there to walk in. If you want money to invest, in food processing, I would say Odisha should be the destination. We are the number one in the country in producing millets. So the millet mission, it will be highlighted to the government of India, starts to win it from the private pockets of Odisha. Thanks to the Chief Minister who highlighted this tribal diet. Till then, we Indians were like madly going after oats for diet. Because oats don't grow in India at all. So we are basically helping the European and Caucasian farmers by changing a pilot. So there is a minute, there is an option with we Indians that we can have the same dietary benefits by eating millet rather than oats. So we have to think in a larger perspective in the human behavior. How does food processing help us in the longer term? Corn starch is used everywhere. We can produce that very much there in Odisha. Third is right from the entire southern tip of the state to the northern tip. We grow something called Mauva. In Hindi they call Mauva. Odia they call Mauva. But famous case is known for distillation and alcoholic beverage purpose. But that's not the only use. If you grind it to powder and Mauva becomes Atta, that's again very nutritious, which came to even to all view in the Corona time. There was a huge international market for that. And in Odisha, every household has got one, at least one boba paid in the farmland or in the backyard. So there is a huge potential in itself. You talk about spices, you talk about turmeric, you talk about chilies, everything is grown in abundance in Odisha. Odisha as of today is still untouched. So anybody with money to invest in food processing, Odisha is a destination, I said it hard because I have all the ingredients it takes to set up a good profitable business. And the biggest advantage Odisha will offer is your international market to South Asian countries. May it be Vietnam, may it be Thailand, Indonesia, China or Japan. They are the biggest consumers as of today of all, the, all kind of packaged food and also the European market. 
And apart from that, since I've got since God's own country, all the raw materials available, energy available, water available, skill, manpower available, and a benefit of policy, both in industrialization policy, food processing, as well as MSM policy. So like the provincial sector, whichever suits you, to earn a profit. You earning a profit means a family in Odisha earning a rent you. So we have tied this MSME movement, this MSME growth, food processing growth, with the direct livelihood benefits to the families of tribals and anybody in Odisha for that matter. Because majority of the food processing unit will come up in the central region or southern region or western region. Coastal region, we are very <coughs> deep into now fishing and aquaculture, shrimp farming. Last year we had an exceptional growth of about, export growth of about 4,700 crores, which is again steadily rising. This is the market, the European and the American market, the went down, otherwise for last three, four years we have been having a field drop. During the current time we were the largest exporter of shrimp from the country. So there is a potential in every field you like to go into. And matching with that, we are also going into rapid industrialization. We have all the mega industries coming up in Russia. Like as of today, for example, giving you a small data, 83 million metric tons of steel are made in India, out of which 41 alone is made in Russia. Of the total aluminium made in the country, 75% of the aluminium comes from Russia. All the major aluminium companies are in Russia. With that, we are now going to chemical industry. If you want Gujarat is today, Gujarat is only because of the chemical industry. And we have in the wherewithal once those industries are coming in, the need for processed food also increases. So everything is interlinked. A robust economy, a robust industrial growth will always lead to a robust food processing. So it's a cycle, it's a chain. Now the question comes, all the shops, many government, many politicians provide moving election here. Sarkar Devi, Bhotan Sarkar Ko. Why I say this, it's important because it is to convince you. You can check the RBI records, you can check the finance minister's record. My debt ratio is under control. When we came to government in 2000, we had a budget of 21,000 crores. In this 22 years time, we have reached now 2,25,000 in the budget. And for the first time, we have a surplus budget. My income, my major income of the state comes from mineral revenue. When we came to power in 2000, my mineral revenue was 2100 crores. Today is 62,000 crores. So that is our money. If anybody has a doubt what Mr. Mishra said, that we are going to give 20% capital subsidy, 30% capital subsidy, and electricity that will be free, HPSP free, and other things free. So how do I cover up my balance sheet? Where does the money come from? So money comes from there. And for the last 12 years, we are happy to know that we are growing, economically we are growing more than the national average. They have got a steady growth of 10% for the last 12 years. So that is the kind of growth trajectory we are talking about. And that's the kind of financial backing the government has. That's why as a minister I can, in a public forum I can put it straight forward. And all this has happened for one, one reason. That's called policy stability. We have been in power by the government of Odisha has been in power for the last 24 years. So there has been a single government, single chief minister for 24 years. So that means the government and the chief minister have done something good for the people. So we have been five times. This is sort of a kind of record. And we are again headed towards election in six months hence, and definitely again we come back. So there's policy stability, there's financial backup, there's a growing industrial sector in the state, there's a growth in agriculture. We have cut down poverty by 27%. We are growing at the rate of 10% plus, and we have got the raw materials, and we have got the policy backup. I don't think so anybody today presenting in the entire Bharat Mandal would be giving this data for asking the food processing industry to join the jaggernaut. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
thank you sir for summing up our uh, potential in such a beautiful manner now i will request our director of industry mohammad sadiq alam to highlight the opportunities in agribusiness and food processing sector in odisha sadiq ji thank you sir good morning everyone honorable minister msme industries and energy our respected research secretary respected energy secretary government of india all the famous speakers for today's session industry leaders all the ecosystem players and other distinguished guests present once again i welcome you all in this odisha session uh i'll quickly because we are behind so we'll quickly cover a few of the slides i think uh, a glimpse of what odisha ecosystem or your food ecosystem that is you have already seen in the video uh odisha is being a story of transformation and uh, we take pride of that this is stable government which gives us uh, a policy progressive policy regarding the policy certainty which gives us financial stability and we claim that no other state in the country can equal us today on this count we have grown by almost uh, more than 11 percent uh, since last two years despite of this covid induced drop down we bounced back and uh, we have shown a consistent growth and we are consistently growing above the national average in the past one decades and we have shown also odisha though it's a mid sized state it's not a very big or not a very small despite of this it's more a middle size of a state the report says we have attracted second highest investment during this financial year 22 23 worth of more than 20 lakh uh, crores investment and uh, next to maharashtra and we have already overtaken uh, all the states available in terms of volume even in terms of attracting investment who have sto started a story of this development long before we have overtaken those states and similarly this report of rbi also says we have attracted attracted third largest investment bank is assisted investment during this last uh, year financial year it is evident from these three slides that we have the potential and uh, uh, definitely it is one of the best destination in the country are uh, having a vast uh, opportunities for in investment in this sector now you see this uh, just i have given a map of uh, within india and also indian map uh, showing the routes and everything with the uh, 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 with the global map here you see we have the advantages of being in the east coast and now we are a driving force in the eastern coast we become the manufacturing hub in the eastern part of the country, country. also providing a gateway to the asian region which provides ample sets of opportunities for investment and trade and our policy everything further facilitate this investment and trade in this region and you see we enjoy almost 6 uh, hour distance almost with the half of the world economy and this is a unique proposition available with the odisha as i told we are not driving development in the state only we are driving development in the eastern entire eastern region of the country we are not only gateway to the asean region we are also gateway to sea for all the land of states states like up bihar states like madhya pradesh chatisgarh jharkhand and telangana so that we have very locational advantages and this gives us another sets of opportunities for the investors to come and uh, the invest and also grow here you see the map if you see uh, this is in fact the investment destination has been planned in odisha such a beautiful manner such an integrated manner you will see in the east coast of eastern part of this country this is ns60 which connects kolkata to chennai our entire investment destination has been planned beautifully integrated with the red road network and also leading to the port and the let like take example of pcpi nmj and kalinganagar or thamra investment region or uh, gopalpur all such destination we have planned in this similarly on the west part of this state we have another biju expressway which passes through the nine districts of and these districts are very rich in 
agriculture and uh, allied uh, products. And we have set up uh, almost nine number of paths along this Biju Expressway in the western part of that. And this each another part is uh, almost more than 200 acres of industrial land that uh, all collect like play in uh, facilities ready to move in with factory gate availability of power and uh, uh, water. This provides a completely integrated development of the industry and uh, all the major industrial zones which you've seen is uh, provided with the railway sidings connected with the natural gas pipelines. The uh, major at a different location, five airports are working in Urissa which connects major cities of the India and also three ports and two upcoming ports that provides a unique proposition for the state and uh, it is a really a preferred destination for the investment in India on this state. Now we have not only planned a sectoral policy, we have also gone for thematic sector specific because looking into the potential in this sector, we have also developed this food park. Now we have almost 126 number of industrial parks covering 1,25,000 more than 1,25,000 acres of land. But this sector is specific thematic park, this seafood park, you see the data is very close to Bhumneshwar with all plug and play facilities, all state of art infrastructure is there. And a lot of industries have come. I think today one fellow, the speaker is also present, managing director Mr. Rajan Pari will be also sharing their, his experiences. The B1 company is also operating in that data. And uh, this provides and it is going to get populated very quickly. The another park at Raigada, this is developed by the private entrepreneurs, group of entrepreneurs, and a straight over of almost 65 acres. This is basically on the southern part of this uh, estate with all the facilities that you find that uh, processing complexes, cold storage, warehousing, testing laboratories, packaging center, along with the border facility ETP and STP is available. This is also functioning and it is also going to get populated very frequently. The third is mega food park spread over almost in the 300 acres of land in the Bhumnes are well connected with the port, with the airport and uh, with the all this highways and all with all kind of infrastructure along with this incubation center which is already populated. Before coming into that, I will tell you the steps taken by the, our government for uh, uh, agricultural sector. Numerous initiative has been taken and uh, as a result of which is resulted, we registered in terms of crop diversification, plant protection, post harvest management, we augmented irrigation facilities and also we have taken a stage for marketability. All such initiatives in fact yielded a better result, it is not a one day form. It is the effort of the decades and now it is started yielded result uh, nowadays. We have not become self-sustainable, we become surplus in the food uh, production. So, and in the, some of the cases in our communities, we are leader in the country. Here we can see, we are the largest producer of straw mushroom, sweet potato, jackfruit, third largest producer of cashew, fourth largest producer of fish and shrimp. I will tell you, in 2000, our production was 2 point something uh, met, lakh metric ton. Now we are around 11 lakh metric ton and it will further grow. And five times rise in this uh, production of fish and shrimp. We are sixth largest producer of coconut, coriander and also garlic. Seventh largest producer of vegetable. And we produce 4% of total uh, spice production in the country. We have also obtained GI products, food food products, and you will find all these products in the, all the leading e-commerce platform like Flipkart and Amazon. These are the major production sector uh, uh, clusters are available in Visa. You see it's, it's spread over in, in the entire state. Basically, the western part, southern part and the middle part is very weak in every and allied communities. The coastal area is very rich in breakfast water, aquaculture and the uh, 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 marine products also. You can come because all this information is given in the knowledge paper in detail. I cannot go because we have a terms constraint. Yeah. Oh. And now you come to the policy. Already principal security in his remark has briefly mentioned about these policies and also comparison of the policies, which policy and also honorable minister in his 
keynote address uh, beautifully explained about this policy. Friends, all the policies we have revived. These are the not new policy, but this is an upgraded version of the policy. These policy are revised in month of December 2022. It has been notified by the industry department as well as by MSME department. And I'm begging you that this is the best of best incentive we are providing. No other state in the country can equal or can reach to at least to the near. This is the 20% CIS and also 30% for the focus sector. Number one, this food processing sector is declared as a priority. Being a priority sector, we are offering 20% CIS without any capping. If you are going to invest 100 crores, you will receive 20 crores. If you are going to 500, you will receive 100 crores. If you are going to 1000, you will receive 200 crores. There is no upper sky limit. And then none of the state in the country offer this kind of incentive. I am waiting and you can compare this policy with any of the policy available in any of the states as of now. We are providing 100% exemption on electricity duty, stamp duty, premium reimbursement on the land conversion, employment cost subsidy, and also 100, this is the most tricky part, 100% reimbursement of the state GST to a limit of 200% of the investment or 300 of the investment you have made on the plant and machinery. Means if you have invested 100 crores, we will get reimbursed minimum 200 to 300 crores only ESGST reimbursement. There is no also year capping. Earlier there was a capping, 7 year, 10 year. There is no year capping. This is the best and best policy. If you calculate all the policy incentive, I am betting you that you can also go or check with your CA. Your ABETA is going to increase not less than 7 to 8 percent. Similarly, the other policy which has been notified by the MSB department, that is Odisha Food Processing Policy, offers CIS ranging between 30 to 40 percent. 40 percent in the sense, if additional 5 percent you will get if you are going to set up industry in the notified area, like Vijay Expressway or the industry like for district, we are providing additional 5 percent. And also we are offering uh, uh, 25 percent in, um, incentive on the captive solar power plant by the enterprises, 35% on the rail transport, 20% for the mega food part if you are going to create your electricity valley. This is another opportunity available for you. You can come, you can develop all part, I mean you can get this incentive from the state itself for developing this part. And similarly we are also giving 50% incentive to those institutions for infrastructure development who will run the courses, technical courses on this food processing. They will be also getting 50% uh, assistance and some other financial support like uh, we are providing support for exposure visit, for study, seminar, workshop, conducting ESDP program and so on. You can have this copy, I think we have a sufficient copy, policy copy available in the pavilion and also in this hall. You can get the copy, you can explore also in the website. Now, what we talk about this uh, policy, infrastructure is one thing. The second thing that we have to, the robust policy from third thing is that unless we provide best of the best facilitation, Odisha, one of the pioneer states who has taken, undertaken reforms, certain reforms for ease of doing businesses. And as a part of this ease of doing businesses, we have created centralized investment promotion agencies like EPCOL is providing and also the district level DIPA has been created that is district investment promotion agency. We have a robust mechanism, this new application, centralized application GoSheet has been developed, well integrated with the national single window clearance system also. All the 18 department services are onboarded. You go, you will get all the clearances through this single window clearance system, this GoSheet portal. And we back award on this, we are an achievement state on that. The next what you see in the right side of the presentation, it is aim. Aim means which what, what we have talking about, what we explain about the incentive. But unless we put a robust system to process this incentive proposal in a hassle phenomenon, it is not going to in fact very through full work. What we have done, this aim 2.0 has been launched since June onwards. This is end-to-end -end integration facility to administer the incentive proposals. You will be knowing, you will be notified time to time about the progress of this proposal. Every status will be known to you through e SMS alert, through email alerts. You will be knowing. 
And the best part of the, there is no human intervention. It's completely transparent, completely accountable, fast, hassle-free, smooth. Once it will be approved, the money is also going to transfer directly to the account of enterprises through online payment gateway. What we talk about this, uh, you know, ease of doing businesses. This is one part that we have taken all these steps. The other part is that, you know, for any of the entrepreneur setting up a new industry, it's really, you know, investing the initial money. It's a very difficult because each money counts for. For the uh, any industry well established, they have don't have issue. If the project will be stage out, they can bear. But initial the enterprise cannot. We thought about the can we reduce this initial cost of setting the industry. That's why our policy has been framed in such a manner. We looked into that and we worked on that and through our policy, through our initiative, we ensured that highly competitive cost of doing businesses. Through policy, we are offering land at a very consistent rate, much, much lower than the market rate. Also, ability, you know, abundant water uh, resources are available. We are allocating water as per the requirement of the industry with a very effective rate and also high quality power. These all things are provided in a very competitive rate. Probably, if you compare with other states, you will find this is the best effective rate, best cost effective rate we are providing. As we have planned all our destination, like production center, the valuation center, and also port, all the SH and uh, say, uh, intense rail on road network in such an integrated manner, automatically your logistic cost is going to get reduced. This is well planned, good, really planned, and well integrated manner. I will also be take few seconds on this skill. No, skill is another thing where the government has invested a lot. World infrastructure has been created by way of one skill center. You come Bhunveshar and go must be busy. You see, it's not only about the infrastructure, work skill center. We have a technical partner of Singapore who provides all technical support to this. Our, uh, uh, all the uh, trainees also goes for the exposure visit to the Singapore. This work in center really transformed a lot, providing pool of skilled mind power. Apart, you take any name of the premier ministers, national minister, you will find one branch in Odisha, whether it is IIT, IAM, or IMT, and so many other premier ministers like Triple IT, NIT, and so on. We have around 200 engineering colleges in the states, 950 plus ITIs, and I take pride of that. In the top ranking of 100 IITs that is done by the government of India, our 11 IITIs of our state of Odisha find place on that ranking of 100. It's not, it speaks about the volume, it's also about the quality training we are providing. Or these manpower, young professionals are ready to employ personnel, and on top of that, we are also giving employment cost subsidy. So here on the both from both the hands in fact we are extending all kind of cooperation to the industries on one hand ease of doing businesses and on the other hand we are offering highly competitive cost of doing businesses these i already have explained now friends we are not starting from scratch already there are major players available in the state of purisa here you can see these are not the exhaustive this is the negative, a negative list the Coca-Cola, Bidesh, Bavlum, Bavlum, Britannia, Nissan, ITC, Caribbean India, so on. And I think we have also one speaker, Mr. Adit Panda, is there from Coca-Cola, he will be sharing his experience also. And these industries had not only set up, they have also further grown for you know, capacity expansion. Indonesian has set up another product line, Britannia is going to expand. Some of the units also has gone for multiple units. Spaghetti mills has gone for third units. Bath muscle has gone for third units. So they are not only capacity expanding their capacity, they are going to set up new and new industry. These are the major players available in Urissa. What I provide, I have explained in brief. This private ample opportunity for all the ecosystem players. There is a huge potential on the machineries, manufactured machineries and equipment in this processing sector. Itself, processing center provides ample opportunities. There is huge potential on, uh, let's say, uh, it whole chain infrastructure, logistics, support services, packaging industry, everything. You, uh, 
what I have, in fact, I have given is just a, a snapshot of that. You go and study detail. We also, on behalf of the government of Odisha, invite you to Odisha. Come, explore in detail. And it's a beautiful, beautiful city, and you will love to it. And uh, thank you very much. Our, we will be here till uh, tomorrow, and uh, you can uh, get all the policy copy and other knowledge papers available, and brochures also available. And uh, with these words, that's all from my side. With these words, I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Shadiji, for such a detailed and beautiful presentation. Now I will request Rasmi Sahu, Mrs. Rasmi Sahu, the director of Home Oil and Four Mills, to share her experience regarding the ease of doing in business, doing business in Odisha. Ma'am. guest and uh, all my uh, sitting brothers and sisters here, Jai Jagannath. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, in behalf of uh, Luchi Food Line, Home Mall and Florence Limited, in behalf of my father, Dr. Sharath Kumar Sahu, I am speaking in behalf of him. As uh, everybody knows, he is a visionary and uh, of course a masala king of Odisha. 50 years back he has a vision to set up a small industry with a uh, amount of 5000 rupees. He started this uh, journey of, of setting up a small business in Khapuria industrial state in Odisha. Uh, so, uh, that was the beginning of the journey and today uh, we are having more than uh, 500 CR turnover. Uh, so that's uh, the 50 year journey. Of course it took a too big uh, time to uh, reach here. But uh, 15 years back I remember because I can only share uh, my uh, experience with my father because I have grown under his uh, guidance, his uh, um, learning from him. So I can only share this because everything about Orissa, what is uh, given for, uh, to our state and our country uh, has been explained here very nicely, which is I'm being very proud to be in Orissa uh, as making this industry, uh, taking it forward. Uh, as 15 years back, I will, uh, share a small thing as uh, my father always say Orissa is a very small state people are not able to and every resources whatever we because manufacturing industry every resources whatever we buy we buy it from outside of Orissa so that was uh, uh, really very difficult for us a uh, few years back but uh, now I am I can proudly say um, maximum amount of resources we have started procuring it in Odisha itself. So that is a, that is a very uh, profitable for our industry also. And being as an industry and making a manufacturing industry, we are even thinking beyond making it a mega manufacturing industry because uh, setting up one type of product and uh, is not uh, going to help every uh, year we are thinking of new project so even I can uh, share like as we started with spices we are not only in spices right now we have come up with all agro products uh, pasta is also uh, is the first manufacturer Ruchi has manufactured in Eastern India uh, 25 years back so we have introduced pasta when People doesn't know what is pasta. That was a, a really a very a, a very difficult and a thing on that journey when we are making people aware about making pasta. So that was a, a, when we started with one 
uh, line of Italy line in Kadak. Now in uh, Ramdaspur we are coming up with another two lines of pasta. So that was uh, the expansion we are thinking about. And uh, while uh, this oil oil is uh, growing up, so as I am in a part of this uh, group, so I thought of creating another a small manufacturing unit as it's a startup you can say we are under MSME uh, Vishweshwar Foods uh, Private Limited we have started this com sister concern company in the vision of uh, uh, making the farm agro products in it so this company is a contract manufacturing company we do private labeling for other companies also and we have our um, trading co-companies like Vishweshwar Trading Company is also a part of it. That trading company uh, have its own e-commerce uh, pl platform and uh, have its own retail outlets like uh, have everybody knows about Frozic outlet where under that uh, outlet we keep all uh, definitely Ruchi brand is there and other brands also we are uh, including under that uh, under that uh, retail outlet and we are giving opportunity to people uh, to see the product what we are producing and uh, uh, as Frozit is also a brand which uh, we have launched 12 years back frozen food ready to eat so that was also a first uh, frozen food ready to eat in our uh, eastern India uh, so all these new projects we have come up and next coming years also we have so many like breakfast cereals we have launched uh, soya chunks we have a huge uh, producing plant in uh, Pratap Nagri uh, in uh, Katavoneshwar Highway so these are uh, the projects which are this is already online and it's coming up so I am happy to share uh, my upcoming plans and uh, uh, the experience with Odisha state government. I'm happy that there's so many opportunities and uh, uh, reasons that we should invest in Odisha because uh, uh, many supplies to us like packing material supplies or uh, any uh, related to the industry supplies they are willing to come Orissa. So even uh, we are helping them to come to the single window and enter uh, through this and uh, invest here. Few already, I think I can name some people in from West Bengal, Kolkata. They are already started investing in Kolkata uh, footpath plant. So they are our supplier and they have started investing. So that is also a, a good thing for us. So. Thank you so much. Thank you to get me. Thank you, Rashmi ma'am. Now I will request uh, Mr. Rajan Pathi, the commercial director of B1 Export Houses, to share his experience regarding the export opportunities. And we will speed up a bit because the next session of UP is probably at 11.30. Good morning, Honorable Minister, Honorable Our Principal Secretary, also Director Industries, Special Secretary MSME. It always gives me an immense pride, pride and pleasure to get associated with the ghost of Orissa. I have been one who has existed in Orissa for the last 40 years. I have seen the transformation of Orissa in the last 40 years, particularly in my own domain, that is the fishery sector. One of the sectors which has been wholesomely responsible for changing the fortunes of our people, the socially economic backward people of Orissa, that is the fishery sector. I was just mentioning to Honorable Minister in the late 90s how the fish, uh, there was a dramatic change in the fortune of the fishermen who ventured into aquaculture field in Orissa. From cycle motorcycles, they have today graduated into Mercedes and BMWs. So that has been the growth story. If you uh, go through the districts from Baleshwar, Bhadra, go right up to Diga or Jagasimpur or come up to Ganya, all the coastal districts of Orissa, you can see this reflection of success stories. 
I don't say they are not failures, but the success of the farmers, everything has overlapped. Now let me tell you, the specialty sector in Orissa, can you just run it, the snap, uh, just for the data for the, uh, ah. So I'll not look at my presentation, I don't want to even refer to it, but uh, just for the benefit of the audience, these are the statistical figure which goes with the fishery sector of Orissa. The fishery, uh, well my forte is the exports, the forward integration to the international markets. And The late 60s saw the beginning of the fishery sector in Orissa. In the late 60s, it was the prerogative of the big MNCs like the Siemens uh, and a lot of Ponds India, like big, big companies. They used to come and finance into the fishery sector. Gradually, uh, uh, senior entrepreneurs, the mentor, the, the iconic figures of the seafood in Orissa, like Mr. Tararanjan Patnaik of Falcon Marine, Mr. Amarindra Das of Suryodhar Limited, Mr. Radu Patra from Puri, they entered. And they got into this uh, field and the sector started growing slowly. Mm -hmm. Come the <coughs> 90s, aquaculture mm -hmm. became a big phenomenon mm -hmm. always. Uh, the CP aquaculture of Thailand, you will not see these things on the slides, yeah. so it's just the statistical data. The CP aquaculture of Thailand and Indian Orissa, they started encouraging aquaculture in the Baleshwar district to be very specific in Poliki of Baleshwar. And Entrepreneurs like B.R. Patnaik from Rao Kela, Mr. Sanjay Mahanti from Bhubaneshwar, they got into this space and one of the pioneers in industry to get yeah. into aquaculture in Orissa was Surya Uddhav Limited. Okay. And then I had the privilege of working as the export manager, yeah. head of the exports. Come to the late 90s, there was such a boom <laughs> that when this uh, new species, when the new species of uh, Wanamai, the white shrimp from the Pacific Ocean was introduced, there was a phenomenal exponential growth the, in the productivity and the production and also in the export figures. So far, to put it in perspective, let me tell you, in, for 2007-8, the export of Orissa seafood was 407 crores. Last year, we ended up almost like 4,600 crores. So you can see the exponential growth of the state and what the potential holds. Sir. Let me also take the privilege of mentioning this, that Orissa, not only the fisheries, like we are fisheries are definitely a potential sector, but also with 10 agri-climatic zones being blessed by the heavens above us, by Lord Jagannath, we have a diversified topography. And this type of 10 agri uh, this agri-climatic zones makes Orissa a veritable food uh, basket of food products. But one of the products which dominates other products in the fisheries sector. And coming back to because the time is limited, as Mr. Vikash Pandya was telling me, and Sir was also telling me, because being one business house, my chairman, the group chairman, we are directors, he's a, the group chairman, the investor, he was also a simple person who had ventured into aquaculture in 2000. We came into export in 2014. And 2014, the export of the company was 22 crores. And in 2023, the group turnover is about 650 crores. The uh, State Department, MSME Department, I think, has acknowledged our performance and they have given us a certificate of merit on the 8th and under the state awards. We have received the letter. So that has been the story. And B1 today, we started with one factory. Mr. Vinas Alam was here for the first factory in the seafood era park got started under a grant from the Ministry of Food Processing Government of India. And the second factory is getting started in the adjacent plot. That also we got a grant. And today starting with the one single factory in there, there are seafood fire. We have four factories now coming up. Three are running and the fourth one is coming up in the adjacent plot. We are employing 2,500 people. A person who was running on a bike from farm to farm giving feeds today is responsible for the livelihoods of 2,500 people. Honorable CM, Honorable CM has left no stone unturned to see the progressive growth of this trade. The Mukhya Mantri Matshya Jini Kalyan Jodhana has 16 schemes, 16 schemes. And if you have a closer look, all the facets, all the facets of the fishery trade has been covered. 
even they have taken care that when there is a fishing ban, which is from April 15 to June, during the fishing ban, they are ensuring the alternate livelihood of a marine fishermen. And this has been also complemented by central government, Mukhya Pradhan Mantri, Vachya Sampar Jojana. 2050 crores have been allocated by the central government in five years' space, and 6,000 is for the first year. That is basically for the infrastructure of the fishing harbors and for certain things. But all the 16 cables, they are so careful and really uh, congratulate the government of Orissa for minutely looking, starting from making of nets, making of uh, engines for the traditional craft, uh, traditional craft, the catamaran boats, right up to the livelihood, the training program, everything has been, all the facilities have been covered. So Orissa is a happening state and we have been very privileged to have a very, very stable political system. Which is that is the whatever the envisage implement and make it a reality. So my appeal to all of you, please join us as they call it. I take the words, the famous words of a uh, uh, honourable CM. Join the Jagan, uh, Juggernaut. Be uh, join us in a progressive growth story. Be pre feel privileged and also seek the blessings of Lord Jagannath. Have a good day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rajan Babu. Now I request Sri Kamaksha Das, co-founder Kruti Kapti, an uh, MBBS doctor, then MRI, then roasting coffee, and changing life of a tribal village, Kendri Buddha. Right. Please. Honorable Minister, Mr. Patan, Kishant Dev, Saswat sir, other dignitaries, uh, my co-panelists and ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> thank you for the kind uh, introduction which confuses everybody. So, uh, yes, I went to, uh, I'm from Korapur, to be honest. I'm very proud to be from Korapur. But when I was to introduce myself from Korapur, it was a tough one 15 years back. Now it's a very proud identity with which I, I live. And uh, so I'm speaking about growth opportunities and I'm taking a storytelling mode. And I know time is a constant. I'll stick within five minutes. So uh, our logo represents what we do, which is empowering the tribal women. The coffee estate needs to be world class. And we create a coffee community at the farming level, as well as at the level of the consumers. Now, I have been personally extremely inspired by C.K. Prahlad's bottom of the pyramid model. Obviously, we don't follow the classic model because then you have to create a lot of consumers at the bottom. Fortunately, our Koraput Cafe has generated the second highest revenue this month. So that means the bottom of the pyramid is getting empowered very nicely. And at the same time, we are not compromising on the quality of what we are creating. Now, this is the entire ecosystem that we influence because we are into specialty coffee. We are not into mass coffee and specialty coffee needs to be calibrated across the value chain. And the Sora art truly inspires us. It's a lovely way to look at how we look at the entire space. And there are only two steps in this where the 100% step is not done in Odisha right now. Last year, we moved 50% of our curing into Odisha because of a project that the DIC in Kurapur did that did a, supported a private entity with a lovely curing unit. And we could do 50%. And this year, we have decided the 100% curing of whatever coffee we are procuring from Kurapur will be done in Odisha itself. Now, of course, roasting we have completely in-house because I completed my specialty coffee roasting in Hong Kong from SCA, which is world's number one body, and I finished the uh, highest level, so that makes me more confident that we can roast the best. And I'll come to the story why we feel we have created something good, is because at the World Coffee Conference, our coffee, Kindri Buddha Naturals, got India's first prize. And from a state which is not known for coffee to produce India's best, you cannot speak a lovely story, right? And it cannot be empowered without a supportive ecosystem. And I have quit my job in Hong Kong just a month back and I've come back because I believe in the story. And so is Tapan who has left Cafe Coffee Day and joined us as the big industry head. And we have plenty of talent within the team who have left other states to come to Odisha and we are curating the entire story in Odisha. And hopefully, we can be, say, 
30 percent or 20 percent of Gucci one day, and it's a lovely string. And it's a 50 year old string, and we'll try for that. Uh, so we are writing the Odisha web because of a few reasons. First, there is a vibrant startup ecosystem, and it has been spoken about in a lovely way. Availability of quality talent. The good thing I saw in all the presentation, nobody is speaking about cheap labor. We are talking about quality talent, and that's a big difference because you have to create skilled labor. Like two of our top baristas are tribals from Koraput, uh, from Kindrigoda. If they had not become baristas, they would have migrated or they would have done some daily wage work. But you are upskilling them for for Kruti coffee. But even if they migrate, they migrate for a better job, not for some exploitative job. So that's the ecosystem we need to create. There's a lot of positive vibe about Odisha. I'll take a couple of examples. The Hockey World Cup, we got a chance to show our coffee there. The entire expat community which comes to Odisha comes to Pretty Coffee. And I'm very proud that they love our coffee and they believe that it's one of the best. And we try to do that and sometimes you can miss that as well. There's a, the second story, uh, you know, like I was in Hong Kong and whenever I was traveling or flying, I was seeing the Odisha ad, you know, like the, uh, the India's hidden treasure uh, best kept secret and that, that has created a lot of curiosity for people to travel to Odisha and most of these people love coffee right so we have gained from that story so I would thank the government for really positioning Odisha as a very lovely tourist location and uh, you know like there's a growing local relevant customer if you go to any of our cafes in Odisha we have four, three of them you will find a lot of, lot of people drinking hand brewed black coffee which is not something that people go for, right? We have curated over the last three to five years. But we don't have to depend too much on consumers from outside outside this point of time. Of course, we're trying to open something in Bangalore, and obviously we can then position Odisha in a better way there. And uh, I'll skip these numbers because I, I, I find quite rocked by the type of growth that others have had, so I'll skip them. But on every parameter, we can say that we have grown over the last three years. and. Uh, if you look at our coffees, they are all named after either the state, the village, or the community. On Amazon, our largest selling coffee is Kalinga Gold. And when I ask some of the consumers why they like Kalinga Gold so much, because they believe in the brand. And Kalinga is not our brand, it's the state. Right? That speaks about the confidence about the brand. Our second largest selling is Paraja Strong, which is named after the largest community of farmers that we support. And when I was giving these names, many people did not believe in it, but they are connecting very nicely with people. So that's a huge pride story and 100% and of our farmers are from the Paraja community. 80% of them are women. Not many people connect women as farmers. And that's the story that the Odisha video also showed, that most of the farmers are around women and they are empowered. So that's the, that's the true story. And we have grid bags, I'll, I'll skip our marketing bit, but we also picked a couple of coffees from Kandahar. We tried uh, last year and we tried to position them globally, uh, Udaygiri Naturals and Darin Badi Naturals. So uh, we do support a few agri items, they are not necessarily our own. Like the, the honey that we have has pollen counts of 150,000. I think the National Dairy Development Board considers anything better than 5,000 units pollen units as good raw honey, ours is 150,000. It's a couple from Singapore who are growing in, uh, Odia couple from Singapore who are growing in Odisha and we are supporting them. Uh, a black pepper is from Kindri Buddha because as you know with coffee they grow black peppers and that's also pretty good. We support Kandamal Haldi because we are proud about it. Our cashews we support is from Koraput villages. Uh, I, I, sto uh, I spoke about Amazon already, some of our problems. Like our Kanika Gold is uh, Amazon's choice now. So something is happening good with uh, whatever little we are doing. I'll just conclude with a video if it runs. I'll be very happy just to say how we started in 2013. 2021, we transition to specialty coffee and 2023. <laughs> Thank you so much for your attention and please come to Odisha, you will feel as proud as always. Thank you. Thank you, Kamakshi Now I will call our last panelist, Dr. Aditya Panda, Fruit Circular Economy Leader and India and South Asia partner to share his
Thank you, sir. Uh, hi, everyone. A heartfelt welcome to the Pradhaf uh, Kestri, the Honorable Minister and SME Department, uh, Sri Sastrav Minister, the Principal Secretary of SME uh, Department, and uh, Technical Reason Dias, and uh, friends from industry and the audience present here. I would like to thank Mokfe for giving us this opportunity to speak uh, Ease of Doing Business. Uh, where I'll be sharing our experience in what we are doing in the state and how the state government has been extremely supportive. So, uh, as you all know, uh, that Odisha is ranked one of the more, uh, top states in ease of doing business uh, in the country. Uh, and uh, this has been possible by clearly designed policies uh, which have been designed carefully and the processes of the state government. And by identifying the need and addressing the criticalities uh, that is to be supported for the industry. We have our operations in Odisha for quite some time now and I will try to point out various areas where the state government works with us to facilitate our operations. Firstly, at local level, our factory has been in a district called Khorda. Many of you must be knowing about it. Here the state government has set up, uh, 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 Director Industries mentioned about it, uh, that uh, there is this DIPA that has been set up by the state government, the District Investment Promotion Agency. So, uh, it has been headed by the district magistrate and has been represented uh, through a multi-sectoral uh, departmental representation kind of a thing. So, where various department uh, uh, representatives come and uh, solve your issue directly. So, we had a recent experience of constructing a brownfield plant in 20 acres adjacent to our current uh, operations. So, from land identification to facilitation to handholding to infrastructure development, everything to infrastructure development, uh, roads, power, everything. So, all the small to small and big to big uh, uh, hurdles and uh, issues have been solved by the district magistrate himself and has been done very smoothly. So secondly, coming to the central level, uh, wherein um, uh, we have Ethical and uh, uh, IFCO under Department of Industries that provide support on investments for infrastructure development. Um, I would say both the MD and Chairman are highly accessible. Nowadays, I mean our problems have been like resolved through WhatsApp messages and uh, calls directly. Apart from that, I would uh, highlight that there has been uh, uh, a feedback mechanism, well uh, curated feedback mechanism that has been developed by the department itself, wherein you get calls regularly from the department whether your uh, problem or issues has been solved or it is still persisting, which is a very good way of communicating with the industry and giving them confidence in that sense. So last year, uh, in the industrial policy resolution that Saswat sir talked about, uh, so it came in 2022 uh, in the Odisha conclave that happened, the state government has taken cognizance of uh, the importance of beverage industry and has um, uh, upgraded it to the priority sector. And this has uh, additionally mobilized many uh, avenues, many uh, subsidies in terms of power tariffs and everything to us, which is a good step and uh, uh, I mean, uh, many a times you would see in terms of uh, say a flood situation, you need package drinking water which can be easily provided to the people. So it falls under a uh, uh, essential category and the state government has taken cognizance of that and has upgraded us to a priority sector which is a good thing and we would actually uh, go going forward we are looking for huge investments in the state. Overall, in Odisha, uh, I mean incentives for the industry in terms of power tariffs and etc. that Honorable Minister mentioned uh, has been like best in the country as of now, is our experience. Coming to like uh, something apart from the policies. So, uh, it's not only about policies that make uh, industries like us confident, it's about the infrastructure in the state. Now, uh, the port infra, the airport infra, the highway infra in the state has been amazing and I mean has been helping us in our businesses. Apart from that in the market, like we are uh, in 400,000, uh, 400, uh, no sorry, 4 million outlets across the country and uh, every day there are some issues in the market. So the police administration and the local administration support that we get from the state government. 
is amazing there and is something to be proud about. I am a proud Odia and I'm, I can say the law and order situation in the country, I mean in the state has been the best across the country. Apart from this, we do a lot of CSR initiatives in the state, like uh, we closely work with 10,000 mango partners of the state. We do something on skill development, we do something on uh, financial literacy and women empowerment as well. And the government support that we get in all these aspects, like linking the government initiatives to these uh, kind of CSR initiatives. There are like, uh, I mean, uh, various schemes that is being run by the government at the grassroots level. And there has been a very easy integration of those initiatives to our CSR activities, which is like an, another additional, I mean, uh, area of, uh, like, uh, area to be proud about of the state. So, Coming to, uh, I mean, uh, taking into account all the parameters that, uh, I mean, uh, all the parameters on ease of doing business, I would reiterate that Odisha is one of the best states uh, in terms of progressiveness and ease of doing business. Thank you. Thank you, Adit Rabu. We would have loved some uh, long question and answer session, but unfortunately, we will not delay the session of EUP, the next participant. So, we will be the whole team will be staying outside for 10 15 minutes then you are welcome to join us in our uh, pavilion in hall 6 and with that uh, i give uh, i express my gratitude to all the vips and all the panelists and a uh, one minute formality just because it is from the side of mopi we can skip just hand over the mementos from mopi Thank you very much everybody. Now we close the system for